thing here as well. So now we're all ready to go. Um, cool. I think we'll wait a few more minutes for those who are coming in. Uh, MJ, do you want to go or you want me to share what's on your the screen? Um, it's up to you. If you want to take okay. control, you totally can. It's all good. I mean, you are the true professional, so I just got to be your assistant. So That is me, the professional here. Welcome. Welcome. One so and all. again, friends, we are really in it now. Um, uh, Beverly already led by example of typing in the chat of where, who you are and what camp you're in. It's always nice to build that connection. Even before then, we are in it to win it, of course, survive and thrive. Uh, CocaCon 2021. Uh, this session specifically is targeted towards our camp directors, program directors, um, not necessarily those in the C suite, but of course, everyone is welcome. Um, we're asking everyone to name yourself, please. First name, camp organization, so participants can know who and where you're from, just like Beverly led by awesome example. Um, if you're able to and comfortable, I always deeply appreciate those who can have your video cameras on. Um, the session again, it, like it's going to be 45 minutes max. And we're going to really, uh, this is going to be one of these conversations that work by us talking together. Uh, you can hear me talk a lot. I like to hear myself talk. My wife says that all the time. My kids actually will say it as well. I think it's a problem when you become a camp director, it gets stuck, but uh, <laughs> I do much better, like I said, in all honesty, learning from you and learning with you. Um, so we will get started in just a second. We have a nice group of individuals, more coming in. And it's still early. It's not even officially time yet. I love that. All right. Now that I've been named co-host, I really, I feel like, you know, it's like Oprah, like, and you get to be a host and you get to be a host and you get to be a host and you get a car. I mean, I would love the car, would love the prizes. Um, I I'll take being a co-host. That's best I can do is co-host, Sam. Ex MJ, you kind of made my day. It's like, you know, won the lottery when you get to have the power, you know, the co-host power. Um, and what we can do with it. Uh, like I shared earlier, really honored and excited to be learning with you and alongside you. This session, again, is geared towards the camp directors, uh, program directors, those who may not fall, first of all, in the C-suite. At the same time, camps come in all shapes and sizes, and we all wear many, many hats. And in all honesty, the executive director versus the program director versus the maintenance director versus the food service staff member. They are all of the same equal plane and responsibility in my opinion. So this session, which I'm now gonna share my screen is, whoop, you gotta see all the open tabs that I have. Setting priorities, all right? making sense of all that we do. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, let's, let's see if I'm even successful. I got a thumbs up, I got people nodding, I got people looking at me, we still have some cameras on. I love the thumbs up, whether you use the functionality in Zooms or not. And um, we're gonna use a little bit of some PowerPoint, just to keep the guided conversation. I'd love for you to feel comfortable to mute, unmute yourself, whatever it is that works. Um, and we'll go from there. So let's start off by just making sure we are comfortable with what this means. Does everyone in the right session? Thumbs up or thumbs down? 
Okay. Yes. If you are unsure if you're in the right session, you can just go like this. I love it. I got some smiley face. I got one of the Beverly's like, ah, maybe, but I love that emoji. There it is. All right. I have um, some code of conduct on Zoom. What that means is my expectations of you, which are none. Okay. That means you get to come in and go however you see fit. If what I'm saying connects with you, great. Hopefully you'll be engaged and participating. I would love it for everyone to be an actively involved in our conversation together and learning together. I think we do it well together. If that's not your thing or having your screen, uh, your video camera on is not something you feel comfortable doing. It, we wanna meet you wherever you are at, all right? If you want to eat, if you need to go to the bathroom, if you need to do anything you need to do, even pick your nose or whatever that is, and there's nothing wrong with that, like that, that this is a safe place. We have to make sure that we create a safe place for us to be however we are, wherever we are, and make sure that um, it's comfortable. So you can mute yourself, unmute yourself. I'm gonna ask a bunch of questions. If people are feel comfortable enough to answer, if you wanna throw it in the chat, we can go that way too. And um, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so setting priorities. I hate to use this term, sometimes really am awful. I would even say sometimes I suck at setting priorities. Uh, I, I have, I mean, undiagnosed professionally, my own level of attention deficit disorder. My wife, um, who is not a trained therapist, firmly believes that I suffer significantly from it. Um, it's something that I'm continuing to work on, but I understand that I, especially in the camp space, get lost. I feel overwhelmed more times than not, no matter what role I've in, whether it's been a camp director, an executive director, a consultant, it's all the same thing because a lot of times I feel like this. Uh, anyone in their career ever feel like this? You can nod, shake your head, thumbs up, whatever it is to recognize, yeah, I got a lot of like, yeah, okay. In camping in particular, of so many industries, and again, we're not rocket scientists, right? We're not building a widget. We're not figuring out a marketing plan to sell X product or trying to derive a new equation that's gonna solve something or create some new technology or even a new vaccine. We're running summer camps, all right? At the same time, we are balancing, in my opinion, the camp director, program director, personnel of camp are like mini mayors, okay? You are responsible for this entity and the process of creating it, let alone is a feat in itself, okay? Then implementing it while it's happening. So let's talk about all the stuff that we have to do every single day, which ranges from responding to parents, dealing with whoever our supervisors are, dealing with those that we may be supervising, dealing with parents, dealing with medical professionals, dealing with board of governors, dealing with the outside entities, dealing with vendors, dealing with budgets, dealing with the, the gamut. I'm sure I'm forgetting lots of different things that if I, things that like really are those heavy stressors, feel free to throw those into the chat. Love to see kind of the different things that are there. I will tell you the biggest thing right now for me is staff volunteers, you know, like getting the right staff to work at our camps is really challenging. Um, that would be any other have a stress or they want to feel comfortable throwing in a chat. I love that you guys are so cute that no one's stressed. There it is. Staffing too. Yes. There's another one. Like-minded individuals, training staff. Absolutely. Let alone like getting there. No sleep. Finding new camp locations. Wow, that is definitely a huge stressor. All right. Training and retaining staff and volunteers. Totally. I see a lot of similarities. They'll give a few more minutes for other things. Finding balance with everything. Certification. 
accreditation, totally. Staff, board of directors, yep. All right. So there's a lot of, I think everyone, I see some heads nodding while they're looking through the chat of what was coming in there. There's a lot of stuff there that's affecting us. So what is on our list? Okay. So before we can even set priorities, before we can even go to X, Y, and Z, no matter where it is, we have to get that on a list. Sometimes the first step in successfully setting priorities is putting things on a list, all right? So if you can indulge me in four or five minutes, whether you have it or not, on a piece of paper on your computer, would love for you to please create your to-do list. What are the things that are on your plate in front of you right now? Do you have a spreadsheet that's color-coded and automated? You are a rock star and I applaud you. Or you may look just like me and have a lot of what I consider the John Nash notes, right? Anyone watch John Nash, A Beautiful Mind? The Beautiful Mind movie with Russell Crowe? John Nash, like this is what my list looked like. This is just today. So I'm sure there's others who have lists like that as well. So if you can, four, five minutes, this is gonna help us in this exercise. Let's start by putting a number of things on your list. And if you have one that's already out, just open it up, but just simply taking an amazing instrument, a pen or a pencil, and handwriting or typing, however you want to do it, what it is that we want to do. What are those items that are on that list? Many of you already allowed us to talk about staffing, all right? So I'm going to challenge you to take a step further when you're writing your list, like which staff? Returning staff, new staff, leadership staff, the volunteer piece, returning volunteers, new volunteers. Where is the pipeline for your staff that are coming in from? Those of you who are wrote down certification or accreditation, let's go a little bit deeper. What are those pieces that are holding up? Is it starting it? Is it finishing it? Is it organizing it? What are those other levels there? the retaining staff, training staff, okay? There's a lot that goes into that. Staff orientation is a huge subject line in itself. Breaking that down a little bit further, what other parts of it? Is it bringing in outside vendors who are doing the teaching? Is it figuring out what is it that you're doing? What is the daily schedule? How much time is it supposed to be? If you can make it different, what would it look like? I mean, I, we can go on and on. Board of directors, how do I interact with board of the directors? We have another session about that, which is exciting, but this one is about what's on that list. So is it communicating with your board of directors? Is it reporting back to the board of directors? Is it sharing business plans operationally? Someone who wrote down looking for a new camp location. That is an entity that requires sometimes an army to create in itself. So what does that look like? Are there, are there five or six locations that you're already trying to find? What are those pieces? Let's make sure that we have a list and that will help us as we kind of go through a little fun exercise about deciding it. So if you have that list in front of you, if you are pretending to do it, if you're still looking at me in awe of wondering what is he talking about and I'm not totally engaged yet, so I'm just gonna wait and see. I'm comfortable with all of those answers. But if we have a list, if we're looking at a list, if we even wrote down a few things, that's gonna help us. I see some eyes making eye contact, which I love. So again, a quick emoji or show of thumbs if we kind of have a list in front of us in some way. I see a couple, great. Yep, some more, love it. Awesome, great. 
Okay. So far, so good. We got our lists. And let's go a step further. All right. So how to start. This, these six items, again, I didn't create. Something I actually learned at a conference once is an acronym that I think speaks to uh, what I try to do and a useful tool. It's called CASE. Has anyone heard the term CASE? No one, people are shaking their heads. I like that. Shaking their heads. All right. CASE, copy, and steal everything. Okay. Copy and steal everything. If you go to a conference and you hear something, you find a great piece of information, copy it. Grab it from anywhere you can. It's a great tool. So here it is. These are just friendly reminders that we all know, but actually a lot of times I know that I forget. So we have to, well, I'm going to go, yeah, create our list, right? Let's actually go back to that. Okay. Determine necessary over non-necessary tasks. Don't overwhelm yourself. Be willing to compromise. Tackle the hardest task first and plan ahead. Whoa. Okay. Like, thank you that you just told me exactly what I never am able to do. And I'm speaking to myself right now. Okay. I rarely ever can follow this subject matter. This is like, what organizational professionals do. There's people who come in and be like, it's really simple. Here's what you have to do. The first thing you did is you already accomplished that. You created a list with me just now, okay? Determining what is necessary over non-necessary tasks. We're not gonna go through that. That is a priority. Don't overwhelm yourself. Yes, I love this. And creating lists, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. It is so easy to look at a spreadsheet at camp, I used to run an A to Z list, right? What is the A to Z list of everything that has to get done? And I've seen spreadsheets of camps that have three, 400 items on the spreadsheet. That's not a functional list, in my opinion. That just is so much, you don't even know where to begin. I like six, the number six, okay? I have six items here to think different ways to remember it. Six items is a good way to start. If you start each day with a list of six things, the likelihood is you're probably gonna be able to accomplish at least 50%. That's three, okay? Plan ahead. Okay, it's not reality. We work 24 seven all the time in our professions, whatever that what used to be. So let's talk a step back. I loved camping forever as I shared with you in my opening statement. I drank the Kool-Aid, I believe in it, I live and breathe it. When I first started, um, I'll date myself a little bit, in the 90s, um, there was a really nice lull after camp. There was this like period of time, we successfully delivered the summer, maybe send out registration information in the late fall, October, November, even December. So like in that in-between of unpacking and just kind of breathing, there was a there was breath and depth. There was opportunity just to kind of breathe a little bit. And I feel this now, and I'm sure many of you feel the same way. There's no real transition times anymore between finishing summer camp and already planning and preparing for the next summer, as well as all the way through. There really isn't a built-in window like there once was in this profession. So let's name that and tackle the hardest things first. Okay. That for me is a little bit of noise and plan ahead. This for me is what's important. Rubber versus glass. Okay. So <laughs> rubber versus glass. All right, why am I asking you to ask that question? Anybody willing to even go off mute to respond? Well, you're 
you mentioned being flexible and willingness to compromise, rubber clearly gives a lot more than glass does. Absolutely. Totally. Love that. Love that. Yes. I have the opposite thought. Okay, Beverly. You're it's still just, with us because you were still deciding what session to go to. So I love that you're <laughs> still in it. Well, rubber holds you back, but glass, you can just slide down quickly. Totally. Agree. You just flipped my whole presentation upside down, Beverly. Not only did you decide to like, you know what, maybe I'll listen to this guy. He may have something to say, but you're actually now taking and flipping it upside down. I love that. And thank you for challenging that thought process. Good. Let's go Don't back to the what rubber does. Rubber can bend, it can mold, right? Glass, you can slide stuff right off, right? Get those tasks done. But also what happens to glass if you drop it? Oh, yes, shatter. What happens to rubber if you drop it? Beverly, go for it again. Well, it bounces. It bounces, okay? So in looking at our to-do list, this has helped me tremendously prioritize and identify even before prioritizing. Things are gonna get dropped. It's the nature of what we do as human beings. We are not all superhuman, okay? Things drop. I forget to pack water bottles sometimes in my kids' lunches. I forget to switch over laundry sometimes. I forget to do the dishes. I forget to respond to an email from a parent. I forget to call back a staff member. We make mistakes. And we have lots of things that are on our to-do list. So I want you right now to look at your list that you just created or the spreadsheet that you have in front of you. And with that question that I asked, can you identify what are the items that are rubber and what are items that are glass? What are those items that are on your to-do list that you wrote down or you have your spreadsheet in front of you? What are the things that if you dropped would totally fall apart and shatter. You may say to me right now, and you're looking at lists like actually everything is glass in my to-do list. Okay, I respect that response back. At the same time, what are those elements that maybe could just hold off a little bit longer? Okay, prioritizing, identifying, or what are those things that I know that I don't have to respond to right now? What is that email that I need to get back to? I have to make sure that I'm going to get to it, but that it's not on top of the list. What is those items? Anybody comfortable to share an item that's on their list that is glass? and an item that is on their list that is rubber. I will. Awesome, please. So because of COVID last year, we were virtual, um, which actually worked out really well because I only had one male counselor volunteer. Wow. That would have been really problematic had we been in person because I would not have had enough male staff to cover um, our boys cabins. So in my mind, hopefully being in person next year, recruiting and getting more male counselors is a deal. Like it's a glass breaker. Like I, I have, that's not negotiable. Um, and did you ask what the rubber, like the, what the other one was? Yeah. If there was, if you found anything on your list, that's a little bit of a rubber at this point in time. So we're, we're a relatively young camp. We just had our 13th year. Um, mm. congratulations. So Oh, thank you. Um, but we're still, we're still learning and we're still, you know, figuring things out. Um, but we've had some staff that have been lead counselors and expect to be lead counselors because they've been there in the past. Um, so 
I'd really like to, I'm the staff director, I'd really like to rearrange and get some fresh blood in there and put people in different positions. But I think that if it needs to bounce, it can. It's more important that I actually have staff versus where to put them. If Spot that makes on. Sense. Okay. Spot on. Okay. You okay. already identified. You have these long, you have a long list of stuff. But that idea, which you know is probably going to actually make your program more successful in the long term, mm -hmm. is not more important than getting the male staff to actually facilitate the program. Right, right. So you're, you're, that's exactly it, okay? That you just now answered this question of what is rubber and what is glass. You now know is that this is something that I want to do. I'd like to do. I should do. We collectively as an organization want to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. In the list of priorities, I can't run my camp without male staff. Correct. So yep. right then and there. Anybody else willing to give it a shot? Feel free to unmute if you're comfortable. Can share. Um, I feel like my rubber items have already been dropped and have been bouncing around forever. And I've like I've got a couple emails I have to send out today, so those are definitely glass. Of I need to get that done. Um, but I've been working on compiling different options for like comms management and how to keep a handle on all of our social media posts and everything. And that's been rolling over from to-do list to to-do list. So I'm still feeling like it's rubber, but I also recognize that it's, you know, bounced across the room 18 times. <laughs> right. So, and that's, and that's, that's a, you put up a great point. A lot of items that we put in that rubber category sometimes never make it off the rubber category. And then all of a sudden they become glass real quickly. When a board member all of a sudden says, where's our communication plan? And you're like, uh, you can't respond with, I'm working on it since that was the response two years ago, right? So a lot of times too, rubber items do become glass. And I love that you shared that because that is definitely part of the evolution. So we have to continuously remember what are those things that, and how do we prioritize them and how do we make sure, okay, today it's, a, I'm bouncing it tomorrow. I'm not going to be able to bounce it anymore. So I need to now clear out what are the things that I can a maybe bounce off for three or four more days and to be able to focus in on that. But it's there, there is that reality. It's very, it's an amazing thing as professionals when our items on our two list can naturally evolve from rubber to glass. Like we are breaking scientific norms right now and be able to create this, but it's true. So I think in your response is like, okay, what are those things that I can, that have become rubber that are now becoming glass? And then what are the other things too that I kind of have to get back to? And I love that you said those emails, all right? This actual piece is something I was, talking about more specifically when I talk to like how to go through your emails. I am overwhelmed by my email box and I struggled throughout my professional career and how to prioritize it. Some people are naturally gifted at deleting items from their email box or have this, those amazing side files of 700 different folders that can put stuff in so clearly and organized. My brain doesn't work that way. Before it was kind of like, oh, I read it. I responded to it and it just sat there. So next thing you know, like I had an AOL address that had like 22,000 emails on it. Like that's not very well organized. But the same time thing, I use this every day when I look at my inbox and the first few things to respond to. What are those items in the email box that are rubber that if I didn't get back to would be okay? Would it be the end of the world? I got to make sure I get back to them. But in that day's task, what are those emails that I need to make sure that I prioritize? That helps me just go through my quickly my email box of setting priorities. The same thing goes through for the larger questions. So now we'll keep going. Okay. Already in the Q&A. All right. We're in it. We have about 15 minutes left. What I want to make sure is there. Let's go back to, and I'm actually gonna stop sharing the screen. 
and we're gonna go a little more in depth in terms of that rubber glass. By a show of thumbs up, thumbs down. Did that make sense to you? Okay. Is that something we may actually try to implement? Ooh, love that. Love that already. All right, good. So setting priorities. Where do people get stuck in setting priorities? Anybody willing to feel comfortable enough to share where you get stuck in setting priorities? I would say um, I throughout this whole process, I found myself that the priorities of the to-do list and that challenge has been personal versus work itself. That's Great. been my biggest priority shifting. Glass was all work-related things. Which and then resulted in, I hate to say it, potentially a personal breakdown of certain ways, right? Like God a lot forbid, of never, I mean, went that direction, it. but like totally it had happens all of us. So here we are in this amazing profession of camping, right? We, we create these utopias for children to thrive and grow and to have a safe, powerful experience. And so many times I've seen this and lived it and it's a reality in our profession, not quite to the same level as dentists, but like the level of self-care that we as professionals take is pretty slim, right? We preach it, we teach it, we train on it. We empower our volunteers to be like, you have to take time for yourself, it's hard. This is how you, uh, you know, when you have a difficult conversation, or you get so connected to a child who's going through some significant challenges, how are you supposed to empathize with them and take them for a walk and go for that? How often do we allow ourselves to do that? That level of self-care. A lot of times for me personally, I'll share with you, like that falls off the list. When I was early in my career, um, my uh, wife was not my wife at the time. Um, and even when we were engaged, during the camp season, she would describe it as if she never existed. Like the, the little interactions that I provided to my significant other was so small and was so challenging because I was so 24 seven camp, camp, camp without realizing that there's this whole other world out there. Has anyone else felt that space that when we get in that immersive when we're facilitating our camp program, whether it be for a week, two weeks, or for the entire summer, do we lose sight of what else is happening outside? Yes, there's thumbs ups happening all the time. So we have to make sure that there is, that we ourselves don't become, that, that we, we put ourselves in that rubber category, right? And like Bridget said, like those rubber items now on her list have become glass. And we have to make sure too that we ourselves are putting that there. Um, and I love that Bridget wrote that note and people are all agreeing, right? When you have so much to do, all you wanna do is take a nap, right? Actually for me, it's not even take a nap. I actually wanna shut down, curl up, put on a movie and pretend there's nothing else out, out there in the world, right? I want, I just, I want to like curl up in the fetal position and just pretend like there's nothing else happening because it is overwhelming and exhausting. Um, and it, it can be debilitating, right? When our to-do lists have grown so big. So the hope is sometimes when we can look at those to-do lists, identify those areas that are glass, identify those areas that are rubber, and figure out what we can do to prioritize. Um, <laughs> I like Beverly's comment, you know? Yeah, if I, I'm not gonna be able to talk to you, but I'm gonna get you engaged. I'm gonna have you work alongside me. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Jen, in terms of I lose the month of May, right? Like just gone, right? Because is that your, uh, Jen, is that before the start of camp? Yeah. All right. Awesome. It is the start. Right. 
the month, the month leading up for the starter camp. No problem. Love that you're able to do this from a coffee shop. I applaud it. And I hope you have some really good coffee there um, or tea or a snack because I could go for a muffin right now too. Nice. Delegation. Sarah, delegation, can you just type a little bit more or share a little bit? So I tend to, we're a, we're a, we're a small um, administrative team. And when you have these glass priorities, it's easier to just say, okay, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. When I know logically and realistically, okay, I can put, I can send that to this person or this person can handle that. But being caught up in the pre-camp craziness, you just like, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I think that makes it more overwhelming and makes it harder to prioritize when you put everything on yourself. Absolutely. And a lot of times too, anyone else get that same level of like being so overwhelmed there's so much to do that we can't find even the space to delegate? Okay, see, so nod aheads, um, which is true. Like there is... The, when the lists become overwhelming and you can't even look at to find out what are those items that are glass, what are those items that are rubber? <laughs> the truth is there's always a balance, okay? The truth is there are always things that could drop and there are always things that can drop and bounce and there are things that can't drop and bounce. So making sure what it is that we identify every day. And if you're a list maker, great. If you're not a list maker, which is something I wrote to people writing, and I love what's going on with Tristan. We're going to go to that too, about how did your emergency become my emergency? Um, let's spend a little time going there. But in a second, I just want to make sure to reinforce the, the takeaways that I hope that you have, and we're not even done yet. But the takeaway is, just to remember to take that list, and even if it's a spreadsheet, take it to six items, okay? Every day, take your spreadsheet to six items. And if you bang out those six items in an hour, awesome. Take another six items. But you have to break your list down. And you have to break your list down of what is happening and how it is. So just breathe. So what I ask, know that you are a talented professional, no matter what you may feel, that you are in this profession for a reason, you have chosen in many ways, you have found yourself in this incredible environment, doing some unbelievably mission driven things, and supporting an incredible space, and providing a product that is unlike anything else to those campers. Remember that, okay? And work on that. Let's go to Tristan's piece about what you wrote, Tristan, um, that someone else's emergency becomes your emergency, right? Is that right? Do you wanna explain a little more, Tristan, do you mind? Um, I think, I think uh, Jennifer from Make a Dream had mentioned the, uh, her, the priorities of lists have fallen out. Oh, there. sorry, there you go. I apologize, you guys got me and I'm trying to multitask. And well, then I responded to Tristan, which I agreed with. <laughs> at the same time, at the same time. So um, Jennifer, go for it. Yeah, I always start with a long list and kind of prioritize that day of what top things. But if I get to three of those things, it's amazing because other things always slide in from someone else. We, you know, have a year round program. So we do about 16 weeks of camp a year. So that really is just never ending. And so you're always looking down the road to what you need to do, but then somebody else, whether it's fundraising or, you know, I'm doing our fundraising campaign this week, even though that's not really my job, <laughs> it's all of our jobs, right? So right. everything just kind of shifts on that list a little bit based on the sense of urgency and who, who else's glass items make it right. higher on the list than my glass items. And especially, I don't think any of us in this group right now have the title of CEO right? So we don't get to always determine what is on everyone's list. Um, 
that that becomes challenging. So Jennifer, thank you for articulating that and you're right on. My only question back to you is, um, which people have asked me before, do you have a calendar of communication or events? Okay, so are already there. So you're already ahead of the game. So why I ask that question, which has helped me a lot of times too, in those priorities and especially with so many different moving targets all the different time, was a lot of times camping as an industry is in a secular model, right? As, we, as someone mentioned, the month of May disappears. I say goodbye to the month of May every single year because the month of May, I'm just all in it getting ready for camp. But the month of May is almost always the same. The month of April is always the same. The month is I go back and back and back to September all the way back through camp. There is something very secular about our operations. And the times that I've been successful and I define success as kind of feeling like I'm in a little more control is when I've really taken the time with my team to map out what are those things in that month's priority and then moving it step forward to the next month of what are we doing and when is the registration information going out? When is the enrollment information going out? When are we sending out our returning staff applications? When are we talking about our asking our volunteers to sign up again? That doesn't change a lot. And if we're able to calendarize it, if we're able to put it on a calendar, whether it's in Google or any other space that works for us, there is something to be said when we have the chance to calendarize it because we know, oh yeah, I'm looking ahead. We do a week ahead every time. A week ahead, oh yeah, we are gonna get ready for our send off of staff registration. Okay, someone on the team needs to be looking back at last year's staff registration email. What are the tweaks you need to make? Make sure we change it from 21 to 22 and let's get that out and right on time. It makes it a lot more attainable. Instead of that item of returning staff application is sitting on that to-do list. Because sometimes that, that gets on the to-do list in August and we don't need to really do that until October. Or maybe we do need to do it in August and we move it over. But sometimes that August list gets so long that it gets compounded by the other list and moving that forward. So does that, does that make sense? Does anyone have a calendar, have been able to break down their to-do list in terms of a calendar of events? Some yes, sort of, maybe, not quite yet. If it's possible, try it. And even take the first, take an hour, Go January, Feb, or I like to start actually with working backwards. So go August to May, right? What are the things that we have to do leading up to camp? When should they actually happen? And start filling up those months. And then you'll start putting a lot of stuff in August. You'll move it over to September. You take some, some of those items in September, move it over to October. But guess what? In reality, when you can look at it from an entire year, hopefully breaks it down a little bit more to be a little more attainable. And they're not just items on a to-do list anymore. So Trisha, I apologize. I gave you more credit for Jennifer's comment, but I'm going to go back to yours because we had some comments onto yours. Go for it. Yeah, um, I kind of just had talked about, I have issues with... Um, or like I, I get the ball going, I'm feeling really good about it to do, but then I have to wait for someone else's approval on it. Or, you know, someone had mentioned too, you have to wait for somebody else to respond to your email. And then you just lose all of that like motivation that you had built up for it. And then, you know, a month goes by and then the approval finally comes through or you finally get the email back. And then, then it's like hard to get back into like the motivation to keep going with it because so much time has passed. So th that's something I've struggled with. I, totally. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you struggle with that as well. A lot of thumbs up. There's a lot of thumbs up, a lot of nodding heads um, recognizing that. Totally. Okay. Here's something that I have done a little bit based on my age, but what I really found out was a missing piece. The phone. Sometimes when I'm super juiced about an idea, and I'm excited about where it's going. I don't, I send an email and then I immediately pick up the phone and basically reiterate what I just said. 
especially for those. Again, we're in a safe place, right? We're in a couple place. There's a term that we're not even going to called managing up, right? So many times as professionals in our industries, as program directors, as administrators, as camp directors, we have to manage up to sometimes our execs and our board members, all right? It's very easy for someone to take an email just like we talked about and decide if it's rubber or glass. We can't control how other people view the materials we put forward. But let me tell you, a phone call shatters it all, okay? Because you're making that personal connection and they may not like it. Like, why are you calling me? I'm calling you because I'm really excited about this idea. I put forth a, an agenda item of how we're going to accomplish it. And I just wanted to make sure that I quickly told you, I know we may not be able to get to it now, or you may get back to me in a little bit, but I just need to share with you how excited I am about it. There, if, the, if you have a supervisor that interrupts you and says, you don't need to, you should not be calling me. I'll look at the email later. I would then reflect on, is this the right environment that I want to be working in? Because a lot of this is about empathy. A lot of this is about understanding. I'm actually going to do a session with the execs about empathy and working with a team. We have to celebrate people's success. And it, for me, I found a way, and sometimes I don't even email, I just call because that get that person takes that call and they get excited about it, especially we're in a, we're in remote world a lot of times now, or have been and continue to be some type of hybrid of that. The opportunity to just talk to someone out loud, to get them to feel that excitement. When I have a staff member who calls me and is like, oh my God, Sam, I just crushed this interview. We just hired this amazing archery person. I am like on cloud nine, nine times out of 10, we talk about it, we celebrate it. And then I write a thank you letter, an email to them, thanking them for how their hard work they're doing and how great that made my day. Cause I was dealing with a lot of glass on my agenda items and you separated that day for me. So little point of advice, if you can figure out those times, you don't want to be too annoying, but pick up the phone and celebrate it because it goes a long way. And as someone who's worn that executive hat before, I've gotten plenty of emails that I've actually unfortunately put to rubber. In many ways, I should have made them glass because of where that individual was sending it and their power and passion they had behind it. So you can try it out one time. Um, there's some more messages in the chat that I wanna get idea. Google is my God, I mean calendar. Yes, there is technology out there that we did not invent, that I did not invent that is really helpful. I still struggle. Thank God they still have spell check. Um, but there is a lot of really great stuff. There's new stuff out there all the time that figures a way to sort emails. There actually is technology, there's algorithms and companies that do this, that actually make lists for you in terms of your response rates of certain email people and naturally will prioritize emails for you in a way, it's crazy technology. I haven't tried it yet. It costs a lot of money. I'm interested in it. But based on your how you respond to, or if you've identified certain people in your organization, whether a board chair or an executive director, it automatically pushes those emails to the top of your list to respond with in a, in a priority ways. And I'm sure the technology actually exists. You just have to figure it out within Google in itself. Um, Calendar breakdown is also probably good for successor plan, for a successor succession planning. Yes, totally. As much as I want us all to believe that we are the only thing that keeps our organizations afloat, and nine times out of 10, you are. And I, the ideal environment is that an organization will be successful with or without you there. And what are the tools that we can do to create that? But the calendar breakdown definitely helps because then it's in writing. The nice thing too, is you put the effort forth to create it. You got to go back to it, review it and go through it again. All right, like 10 minutes left, quick check-in. 
We're doing okay? All right, some nodding heads, some still at the coffee shop, not quite sure, but wanna make sure we have a few minutes left either in chat or out loud. Is there anything else that I didn't cover? Is there anything else that I said that you're like, I don't buy it, I don't believe it, it's garbage, whatever it is. I like your shirt, you may not like my shirt. Is there anything else that I have not had a chance to cover or questions that you have? And then amongst the team, if I missed in your chat, I apologize. I, um, I get sidetracked a lot and I started using toggle, which keeps track of time. Um, I stepped out a couple of times. Um, so somebody might've mentioned that, but that's really helped me focus. Okay. I'm spending X amount of time on this particular camp or X amount of time on helping out with events. And that's, and we're also, our organization is kind of leaning towards, um, I guess for grants and other fun, um, uh, funding, we have to start tracking our time, like how much is going to program, how much is going to events. So that's been really helpful. Larry, that's such an awesome suggestion. Um, toggle, everyone got a chance to Google it, look at it, view it, brilliant. And um, what you're speaking about in terms of a lot of times it's organizational audits that go through the notion, um, sorry, wearing my nonprofit hat now, of like being able to identify where your time is spent in terms of philanthropy or program delivery, in terms of then how to allocate the resources or the said salaries of said individuals in different department areas is a powerful thing, but even more so from a pure time management. Setting priorities and time management are two very different things. And you hit on a huge part that I didn't even cover, which could be three or four sessions about how do we use our time effectively and what does time management look like, but setting parameters for yourself. I love Google Calendar, right? Not in terms of the entire calendar, but I calendar myself to do tasks, okay? Similar to Toggle, some of the other things, like I will say, like I'll calendar a Zoom with a certain individual. I'll pre-send the calendar invites, but I'll write in my calendar from two to three o'clock, job descriptions. From three to four o'clock, I'm doing staff follow-up emails. From five to six, I am doing X, Y, and Z. And then before the two in the middle of the day, I'm taking time for myself. Because I know that when I, whether or not I choose to follow it, it is a great helpful reminder that it pops up and says in 10 minutes, you're doing X, Y, and Z. In 10 minutes, you have this call. In 10 minutes, you have this task to do. What doesn't work is when someone puts layering tasks on top of tasks. But if you can keep it clean and break your day down based on your six items on your list and actually put it into a calendar, my hope is that you can become even more effective. But Larry, I appreciate you naming that and offering that as a suggestion. What else? Feel free, throw it in chat, share. If not, what I will do, which I want to make sure we always try to find a way is time is a gift, right? So any way that we can give you back maybe nine minutes, I want to give you of your time back. I'm going to stay on and answer any questions that you may have to talk about any of this or even longer. But um, you rocked it. This was fun. I hope you felt good about it. Hopefully some of it was in insightful and nine minutes back. So don't need to be obligated to anything else. Click goodbye, peace out, you're out of here. Looking forward to a lot more learning together. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.